Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be Bible journaling out of the 40 Days of Prayer series. So this is a sketchbook that is incorporated into the free 40 Days of Prayer and Fasting class. And I originally did all my sketches in this little tan sketchbook and then transferred them to this other one. But I'm going to transfer this one now to my Bible. The sketch is in the doobly-doo down below. You can download that and sketch it out for yourself. And I've made kind of a reflection of mine so that I can have the reflection, which is the crown of thorns, within that area. So I've just done a really loose area around the bottom there. The verse that I'm going to use is, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And that whole chapter has so much richness in it. So I really enjoyed studying it and reading it as I was preparing to do this video. The paints that I'm using are from one of the Daniel Smith small sets. And I recommended in a previous video that you look into getting some of these small sets or one of these, shall we say, small sets. The six colors in the bottom and center are the ones that come with the set. And so I'm going to focus on using mostly those in this video. The other colors are ones that I've put in, and I'll link you to that video at the end of this one so you can kind of see more about the set. But what I'm doing is painting with a couple different yellows, that bright, happy yellow, and then a more muted yellowish brown color that's adding some dimension to it. So I am picturing the light coming from maybe upper left or off to the left somehow. So I'm putting my darker colors on the right hand side and that helps people to see the dimension. They see, see, see things in three dimensions when they see shadows on stuff. But I'm letting all the colors mush into each other for right now. There's just some really bright colors on the left side and, and kind of mushed in. This section in the center, I'm going back and forth, yellow to the brownish yellow, to the yellow to the brownish yellow. And I'm calling them yellow and brownish yellow because you can use any of your paints. If you've got other brands of paints, by all means do that. And I wanted to create then a shadow underneath, but I didn't want it to be the same color necessarily as the rest of the crown because I'm going to have the reflection being the crown of thorns in the bottom. And I wanted there to be a clear distinction between the two so that that is a little more, I guess, visible. So I'm just painting a very light blue down there at the bottom. To add more dimension to my crown, I'm now using even darker color on the right hand side. And when you, you take a section like that middle pointy section at the top, if you put some dark color on one side of it, automatically it looks like it's dimensional. And you can do anything you want, of course, with a crown like this. I made the crown up. I have no idea if this is what a crown really looks like. You can put all different kinds of points on it. You can make multiple points. But for me, one of the things that I loved about this drawing and the, the whole idea of making it into a Bible journaling made simple project is that if you draw half of something, you don't have to have the other half match. So if you decide you're going to draw a crown, and you're going to include both sides of it, the whole thing, you're going to end up with some points being taller or shorter or fatter or skinnier. At least that's, shall we say, what I would do <laughs> if I was trying to draw it, because it's really hard to draw things symmetrically. And drawing just half of it allows you to get away with not doing all that, and the image is bigger and has more impact as well. I'm adding some darker colors in a few spots right beside the gems and then right around the edges of some of the areas of the crown and that sort of thing and just adding layer after layer after layer helps you to build up the color. If you get your paper all wrinkly, if it starts wrinkling too much because here I'm actually using a brush. A lot of times I use a baby wipe because I just do background type things but when I'm actually painting an image I'm trying to use as little water as I can on my brush because water is what makes your paper wrinkle. But if your paper does wrinkle, then put a sheet of just regular old copier paper on top of it and iron it. And I have a sheet of copier paper underneath as well just to keep myself from dribbling down the side of my Bible because I've been known to do that before. But this is one of the videos that's going to end up in the classroom. And when I say the classroom, there is a free class that I've talked about a little bit before. I'll mention it one more time here. 
that is a 40 days of prayer and fasting. If you haven't heard about it and you want to go and do it, the at, on the day that this is being published, we're in the middle of the 40 days. If you sign up for it, your 40 days will begin on the day that you sign up and you'll be able to move forward for 40 days and come back each day to get a new prayer prompt, new verses, a new worship song. And no, don't worry, I'm not singing in these worship songs. I just picked out worship songs to set the tone for some devotional time. And then I also have the sketches. So the, the big sketch on the white paper is in there. So you can download that and resize it to copy it into your Bible. So if you want to make this exact cross, you can do that from my original drawing, or you can do it from the sketch that's linked in the description, because that one is just an outline. And that's what I keep on the Bible Journaling Made Simple site, which is where I have all of my other sketches. All right, back to what I'm painting here. I'm adding more rich and darker colors because I wanted to add more of that feeling of it being gold. So I'm just kind of dropping color in and letting some areas be lighter color. That, that band across it looks a little fancier now because it has dark color on either side of it. So that makes it pop out. So if you're trying to make something show up, put some dark color next to it because contrast is what the eye really sees. So if something doesn't have any contrast, it's not going to be overly visible. And I'm trying not to have too many areas that have just a line in them. So when I paint a line like this one, I'm gonna paint above it a little bit so that I don't end up with just an outline because the idea with watercolor is not really to just put outlines around something unless there's a reason to have a really simple line like maybe at the bottom of the crown like I just did. For the crown of thorns, I'm just going to make some very simple painted lines and make the thorns come off of them. And you can make as many or as few as you want. And since I have that kind of upside down drawing of my crown, if you do a different kind of crown, then um, you'll want to make sure that your crown of thorns fits into that reflection so that you get that idea that it was the crown of thorns that Jesus wore here on the earth. And then he went to heaven and got to wear his regular crown. That's his casual crown, the one that's the true crown, as opposed to the one that the Romans gave him when they slaughtered him, when he gave up his life for our sins. So I'm ironing it again, and depending on how wrinkly your paper is, you may iron less or more than I do, kind of up to you. And one of the cool things about watercolor is when you have pencil lines, especially when they're light pencil lines, if you're painting in very light watercolor, you can usually erase most of the lines. So all that line work that I did can disappear even after I finish painting if I keep the paint nice and thin. It won't work necessarily if your paint gets really heavy. So I've written the verse down below the crown just in a very small bit of type. And that is the end of my project for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it, a little bit about using watercolor. And there's links on the screen here to some prior watercolor videos. One is on this channel about mixing watercolor and the other is about all these watercolor sets if you're looking to get some Daniel Smith watercolor and you want more information. All right, God bless you. I'll see you guys next week.